fix it up. Great presentation. You have to do it over. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't capture for her? No, because I had it on stupid photo. Oh, oh. oh man. Okay. I do need to be louder. Slideshow. So I should just play? How do you play here? Yeah. Just the, uh, the top left from the beginning. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hello, peers. My name is Jerry Santos, and I'm a computer science major here at uh, NEIU. And uh, this presentation is, uh, is a portion of computer science, which is uh, computational biology. It's a, new, it's a new field, and it's just emerging. So computational biology is an emerging science in a way that it's comparably new to most science fields that involve computers. It's only been around for about two decades. Um, uh, it combines methods from other sciences. Uh, for instance, uh, biology, uh, also chemistry, and uh, methods from um, physics, and of course, computer science. So it's ca uh, computational mathematical met methods from all these sciences are put together into computational biology. Okay. Uh, Company of, the first instance that I've read comp of computational biology uh, was from the 60s, where um, biologists used computers as tools just to capture data and read data back. It was nothing more than that. It was just a, a, a procedure to analyze certain types of data. But now, computers are so much faster and much more powerful, they can... Uh, Computers can analyze millions of data points within seconds. So we have this uh, explosion of, uh, of, of new sciences that involves computers. Uh, we're talking about biochemistry as one of them, uh, molecular biology, evolutionary biology, neuroscience, and pharmacology. Uh, Gabby, you know about pharmacology. We, they use computers to, to uh, simulate structures of, of, uh, of compounds. So. Let's keep, keep going. Uh, what, what makes what makes a computer science uh, biological computer computational biology different from most sciences because it, it allows virtual experimentation. Oh, it's not working. Uh, I the little thing. All right. Um, it's uh, virtual experimentation is a similar process like a uh, working in a lab and a, or a field experiment. You still have to follow the scientific process of observation and taking down uh, uh, data, collection of data, and analyzing it. The only difference is it's, it's not per performed in real life situation, but in a virtual real reality, uh, in a computer computational model, right? What's so good about this is that you can reproduce. You can keep on performing the same uh, experiment indefinitely and change variables to see if anything happens differently. And you can do that. For, for instance, if you're using a, a wet lab, you only have a small sample that you can use one time, right? And, that, and that's it. But for, with a computer ex, uh, with virtual experimentation, you can reproduce it as many times as you want, OK? There are uh, three types of uh, virtual experimentation. Um, there's replication. Uh, which is running a simulation in exact detail. Uh, reproduction is a re-implementation of aspects described in the experiment. And constructive replication, which I'll be doing, is uh, the, the researcher is free to choose their own method based on the hypothesis of past experiments. Cool. What is the rule of a computer scientist? Sorry, it's, I have animation, but it's not working. Well, what, what I do is, what I have to do in this uh, uh, instances, I have to recreate some type of real world, envi real world environment. And uh, it proves to be difficult because real world randomness, uh, because the real wor world uh, have instances of randomness and unpredictability, right? So it's up to, uh, to us as the computer scientists to recreate uh, live situations 
to uh, extract our resources from other sciences, sciences like uh, physics, uh, uh, mathematics, statistics, to help find the best um, probability formula to, f uh, to fit into the scenario what we're trying to reproduce, right? Okay. And uh, the biological process of cell division is a good example of, of this type of uh, uh, real world, world randomness to be translated into a, a virtual situation, right? Okay, that's a picture of a telomere. So this project, this study, is focused on the telomere regulated cell division. Uh, telomeres, as seen here, are, are structures within a chromosome that determine how many times a cell can divide. So your cells in your body, your organ cells, every uh, what we call somatic cells, uh, contain chromosomes that have telomeres at the end, right? Oops, sorry, what happened? Okay, telomeres are located at the end of the chromosomes. So within a cell nucleus, you have 46 chromosomes. And every chromosome at the end is located in what you call a substance or a structure called telomeres. And what the telomeres uh, do is uh, they, they protect your, your chromosomes from bonding to each other when, um, when they're reproducing. Uh, so it's very important, and um, every time a cell divides, the little, the little red part falls off, uh, a portion that falls off or, or uh, detaches. So uh, when, when the telomere, the red part, the telomere length of your chromosome uh, reaches a critical part, it, it's your, 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 uh, your cell stops dividing, and it, it, it dies. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I wish I had the, it was actually a, an animation that, that showed it. I'm sorry. Okay, um, well, let's keep it on. So there are current issues. Because telomeres are the substances that dictate how many times your cell can divide. Uh, sometimes uh, I think it's 55 to 60 generations in your lifetime. Uh, scientists uh, re recent, recent studies have been conducted to determine if that process of shortening regulates the rate of cell division. Does it slow down, right? Uh, scientists are divided in, this, in regards to this topic. Uh, one camp theorizes the two processes are totally separate and, and uh, they, they happen autonomously, right? And some, the other camp, theorizes that the two are independent, are dependent. And they believe that your cell division rate slows down as your telomeres get less and less in length, right? Okay, so here are my sources. Uh, that uh, Four studies that focused on telomere length. Uh, a, a modeling process of telomere. By, uh, these are all arranged in chronolog chronological uh, order. The first one being in 1999 that... Uh, focused straight on, uh, uh, with telomeres, is uh, they, they proved that it was autonomous using a Markovian algorithm, okay? Uh, the Markovian algorithm is a probability er algorithm that does not depend on the current state of the subject. So uh, it was applied to telomeres as uh, the telomere length not having to do with any uh, the rate of uh, cell division, right? Um, and then, uh, 2007 uh, was a dependent uh, process type using a gaunt persian algorithm. Uh, this is a probability that is dependent on the history of the subject. So this algorithm took uh, in account the length of your, your telomeres and applied it to the rate of uh, cell division. And uh, then another, another one, uh, 2011, was a delayed algebra rate algorithm, which was autonomous not related, and then the last one, the most recent one, is a dependent using a, a prob pro probability algorithm that did depend on, on a, a telomere shortening, right? While I was putting this together, I noticed something. For computer modeling, the ones that say that is, it, it's an independent are, did not use computer uh, simulations, but the ones that did show that uh, through uh, uh, computer um, 
computer uh, uh, reenactments it, it, it had some kind of connection to it, right? OK, cool. So our theory, um, based on our sources that employed computer modeling, we theorized that the rate of cell division decreases as the telomere le length shortened. OK. How do we approach this problem? Well, we're, we are going to develop a computer modeling uh, simulation of telomere regulate, regulate cell pro proliferations, how they divide, right? How they, how they uh, become, uh, become a, uh, uh, how they reproduce basically in order to show if the process is either autonomous or connected, okay? Um, our research question is, can our computer modeling effectively represent A, if the process of telomere shortening and the rate of cell division are autonomous processes? And, uh, and B, if it is if, if it influences the rate of cell division. This means that we're going to use two types of models, one dependent and one in independent. So basically, that's it right there uh, for that. So creating our computer model. So modeling is defined as an abstraction of a real system with the objective of defining and representing its properties. So we're, we're going to take telomeres as an object and synthesize the, the, the qualities of what makes it a telomere, right? So we, that's how we come up with, with how we uh, have variables to describe our, our model, right? So we have telomere length. We know that telomeres have a certain length. They start off in. Uh, and then the limit, they stop dividing, which is the, 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 uh, the telomere, um, I think of, I would say, that's a good word for it, the shortest amount possible of tel telomere length, right? The lower limit, OK? And we know that they divide into other cells, so that we have daughter cells. And uh, one, one of those cells will not die off because they still contain uh, the original length strand of the telomeres, right? And we also have initial cell population versus end cell population. So in pseudocode, if you're in computer science, this is how it would look when you start off uh, 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 structuring a, a model. Right. Sarah, you recognize that, don't you? Right. So. Okay, how do we create, how do we, uh, since we have the attributes of what we need to uh, do an experiment, experiment on, we have to recreate the environment which we're, we're testing it in, and that's what this next part is. So the Markovian algorithm is the algorithm that is depend, in, uh, not dependent, does not depend on the current state. So we we'll use that as one action, one method, and also the the, comp, the Gompertz Pavle algorithm that depends on the telomere length. So whenever you see these lines here, these are actual methods of, of the Markovian algorithm per se has happened. And uh, and on the second model, the Gompertz model will be uh, doing the same process. The only difference with this is it takes these limits on top as as a factor. Uh, as, it, as the, the telomere length decreases, it should slow down, uh, depending on, uh, in regards to the type of algorithm. So that's our two models. So the, our, our materials to uh, simulate, for the simulation is a language called Python. Uh, it's, it's a standard uh, language used in engineering and science. And uh, for, envir for environments to generate graphs and uh, animation, we're going to use MATLAB. Right? OK. So running simulations. So we will run multiple simulations using both models to produce data. So that's how we uh, accrue data is through, uh, through running a uh, reenacting uh, the process over and over again until we have a normalization of of, uh, of data, right? So here's a little, that, that's how, how our lab result will, will probably look. So, something like that, I just made that up. So we will then compare the data with physical laboratory sorts. So that's how we check our the accuracy of our models is through looking at actual physical lab data that's already been produced in, in labs, right? Okay. Why do we think this research is important? Well, 
Telomere research can affect the health and lifespan of an individual. Uh, telomeres are directly linked to aging because your, your, uh, your cells can only divide X amount of times. Uh, it, your body cannot produce anymore. And that's how you get old and die, basically, is through uh, this type of regulation, telomeres. <clears throat> well, cancer detection and suppression, about 90% of, of cancers involve telomeres <laughs> because telomeres are the ones that shut off uh, as a trigger to turn off cell division if your chromosomes are damaged. If it's not turned off, your damaged chromosome will keep replicating, thus it becomes a tumor. Okay. Well, with this method, uh, other computer scientists can use our methods for their own research. It's, it's, the methods that we're producing can be applied to any type of, of uh, research uh, that concerns uh, co co computer modeling, right? Okay, here are my sources. Oops. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you. Any questions? I wish you could have where seen. Are, where are discussing? Do you have any uh, tough questions to throw at your? Do you think that um, your model would be able to uh, compensate on the longer to longer? Sorry, one more time. Do you think your model would be able to? Yes. Well, that's why we're using uh, two types of algorithms. One that is dependent. Well, the real world will, uh, contains noise. We uh, uh, noise that that it's unpredictable. Right? It, it can it can take a, an experiment and uh, add add a, a certain. Um, it, yeah, yeah. We, we are we are taking into account these two things. Which is uh, one that depends is independent as a control, and one that, that depends as the actual uh, reenactment of, of uh, our um, our simulation. Can we can we uh, accurately uh, simulate? Is the question right? Um, what we're doing is we're we're taking the basic qualities of telomere shortening and just applying it into uh, a math mathematical model. So uh, we're more concerned about how they divide, what rate they divide, and how many times. So it's, it's very contained in, in, in that area. Uh, but it's it's a it's a new it's a new science. I mean, it, it, it sh uh, people are still doing tests on it. So yeah, I think it's a great question. Yeah, hopefully yeah. hopefully we, we can do something. Yeah. So under uh, this is just reflecting my ignorance. Right. Are there other factors? Surely there must be a lot of other factors that influence cell division. Right. Besides just telling your brain. Right. There yeah, I think that's what we're trying to account yeah. for in your model. And does your model account for that? I think it's, that's a great question. Well, uh, some, right. some, some studies I've read uh, have, uh, have defined other, other uh, things that they can affect it. Like, uh, uh, cell maturity, like what stage the cell is in, and and yeah, that's all also taken into account. Um, yes, the answer is yes. Other things can affect it, but right now uh, the scope of our research is on its own. Right. Yeah. Straightforward. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I saw that in the chart for the trivia Yeah. That one here? Yeah. Um, no? The chart with the four al algorithms. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I see you have like the Markovian algorithm and like the three other ones. Why did you choose the two that you chose and not the other These are fundamentally in the, in the spectrum different. One is just pure on uh, yes or no, and this one is just, uh, and this one here, the Gopperts, it, it pinpoints length. Tell them your length. This is delay, a delay algorithm that just, which you add a, de, a, a delay algorithm in between the divisions that has nothing to do with anything. And uh, the continuum model builds off the Gompert's uh, algorithm. 
it continues from this to that, and uh, uh, they elaborate on that in the research, which I'm using as a, a supplemental source for my for my study. Yeah. My only major comment with respect to your slides mm -hmm. would be to have that uh, that table. I think it's so important. Uh, yes, yeah, just have it on a separate slide. Okay. And and larger fonts so people can see. I, I think that's critical. I think. Right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is actually the only uh, the only studies out there regarding telomeres. So okay. they all all each of them reference each other. Yeah, yeah. it's like a, a a match, you know. Okay. You're making you're making tons and tons of progress. What, what do you mean? But what I'm saying, yeah. you're chipping away, you're chipping away, and the research is getting stronger and stronger. That's just my I don't know. I, that's maybe a biased opinion, but yeah. Really well, what helped me? What helped me uh, is when, when I was doing research is finding out the, the correct question to ask. At first, I just wanted to simulate this. Like, oh, yeah, cells dividing. How easy, right? But then what, once you do your research, you find out, hey, there's two types. There's two, two camps. There's, there are two uh, perspectives in this that you have to really take, take account. And why not do both of them and compare them? So this is basically a, a comparison of two types of algorithms. And how they can be implemented in real life situations. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? I think you're a natural presenter. You're to me, you're very engaging. Yeah, so that kind of stuff is right. uh, yeah, you, you you can sell anything. I, I know that. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I have a problem with 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 uh, my my tenses. That's the only thing. I'm taking linguistics next semester, so I'll be fine. But yeah, yeah, I, I feel comfortable up here and I mean, if you, I think you can even take take more time, especially with some of the, the terms that are uh, more difficult to pronounce and to speak through. Take your time. Right. I think you're fine. Your yeah. pacing could be even slower, I think, in some areas. Okay. And it's not. It's, I don't think it's a bad thing to just uh, to be silent, right? To pause. Yeah. Take some time. Everyone needs. Some let let things time. absorb. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that works well for you. Thank you. That'd be fine. I have to say that you made it extremely clear to someone who's completely like you know doesn't what? know anything about yeah. science or math. Yes. So I would like to like congratulate you oh, for that you. because it made it very clear, very precise what you're looking for, and you were able to like well explain any definitions. Oh, well, thank yeah, you. So good job. Thank you. So here's a. Uh, actually, the actual animation of the telomeres shortening and dying. So, yeah, I wish you guys could all see that. <laughs> but maybe next time I'll, I'll figure out how to do it. It works in the yellow building. That's me. But thank you, thank you. Yeah, any more questions? Well, how about my, my presentation on the actual, uh, this part here? I felt like I, I, I rushed it a little bit. Or the first part? Here, yeah. I think that's fine. Uh, sometimes you know you get some adrenaline. So in the beginning, yeah. typically I tell myself in the beginning, slow down. Uh, yeah, take it slow in the beginning because you're naturally going to go faster, uh, and then you'll naturally slow down I think after that. Okay. But in the beginning, feel free to take time, definitely. Right. That was one of your first slides, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you think I was too broad with my introduction about talking about yeah. presenting with just computational biology? Oh, so your audience, you have to consider your audience too. Yeah. And the time limit. If you have 15 minutes and you have tons of findings, uh, it's more important to present findings than to tell your audience about a sophisticated audience about computational biology. They'll know. They'll right? probably know. So that's fine. Yeah. I think it was the right uh, emphasis in terms of content, but uh, you could just. I could even picture this diving right into telomeres. Um, Maybe a brief introduction, and then that slide with the uh, the table, the two major perspectives, the ta the the four models. Yeah. I mean, your well, research is essentially about those four models. Yeah. We just dive right in. If you want to cut in the, that first part. Well, what I felt that I needed to uh, project was uh, the process of the actual the actual process of modeling, yeah, and how complicated it is. But I, I think you're right. If that's the point that you're trying to make. Yeah, you can still make that point, yeah. I think, right? Um, the fact that it's complicated, but I don't think you need more slides just to make that point, right? Okay. 
Uh, take the most complicated aspect of modeling and maybe just present that as a slide, uh, just as a sample of how complicated things can get, and then can move on to the next okay. one. Okay, right? I get it. Yeah, yeah. That's great, Jerry. Thank you. Yeah, that is excellent. excellent. Okay. All right, I'll just close. Right, so, Zero, you have to get your on for Thursday. Yep. <laughs> uh, I guess you're on. Maybe all this, like, I'm my own worst critic, so. You're your own worst critic? Yeah, that's how I can see it. That's why, yeah, I think. I wanted to record you. I think I got Jerry, but, uh, uh, say, so if you want yourself, you can see all the things that you do. I don't know if you got. That you do well. All the things okay. you do. Cool. Thank you. All right. All right.